All right, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today I'm going to make myself a liar. Yesterday I did say that we weren't going to cube draft today, and instead we were going to do something different. Uh, but when I woke up this morning, the only thing I wanted to do in Magic the Gathering was cube draft, so I feel like an enthusiastic video is a little bit more... Uh, entertaining for you guys than a half-assed one that I don't really want to make. That being said, uh, we absolutely will be pivoting towards a non-cube draft format tomorrow because Historic Brawl comes out and I am absolutely 100% not going to miss the opportunity to play in that event. So without further ado, let's play some cube draft. Absolutely love this format. I really highly recommend you play it. Uh, if you are one of those who likes to hold on to your cash and only spend your gold in things that generate you some value, then this is not going to be the event for you. I will put that out there. But if you like limited, even slightly, if you like deck building specifically, I would say, uh, then give Cube Drafter a go. Now, as I mentioned the past two times as well, there is a free entry for the first time every single time so there's really no excuse not to try it out even if you think you're going to be bad at limited just get on in there it's got free gold waiting for you if you get any wins you're getting some free gold so you absolutely might as well do it uh, but yeah let's get on to it shall we four gold in uh, four thousand gold in sorry i need to get five wins and three losses in order to get our money back uh, we've done okay, I would say, so far in our previous attempts. I'm not going to spoil the results of those attempts, but I would say the two combined, we've done okay. And yeah, let's just see what we get in our first pack, because uh, you know me at this point. I like, I really struggle not to meme. So, <laughs> with that being said, what are we picking here? Um, This pack doesn't make me feel any way in particular about anything to be honest uh, I do like Ashiok although the double colors early on is not necessarily a good idea but this is a very blue heavy pack and we've got Atris as well that could come back so this this pack in specific actually does lend itself to Demir really well so you know what although I wouldn't usually recommend a first pick dual colored card I think I just have to I think I just have to Let's go for it. Ashiok Nightmare Muse. Forcing blue-black control. <laughs> Another Ashiok. Uh, we could go like a blue-black mill. That would actually work really well. The game's stirring for some reason. Really don't know why. I'm going to have to do a reset after the draft portion. Should we just take the other Ashiok? Sinister Sabotage is here, which is pretty good. Ozov Enforce is a decent enough blocker. Foreboding Fruit is just fine. Gilded Lotus is okay. Yeah, let's, let's force blue blackmail. Patient rebuilding is a fantastic, fantastic mill card. I think we've got our archetype just set in stone right now. And this is what I've said previously. Like, you can just really force certain things and get away with it. I mean, I wouldn't recommend absolutely 100% forcing things, but... Like, I decided to pack one, I was going to go for a mill archetype, and here it is. We do have some fixing as well with the Triome. Lockthwain's really good. Cast Down is solid removal. So again, this pack actually looks really good for a blue-black mill deck. Uh, Vraska's Contempt is the first one that sticks out here, and I think that's what we're going to pick. We do want removal. Uh, we want to stay alive and keep our Planeswalkers going. So I think a Destroy, or Exile, sorry, Creature or Planeswalker is very useful. There is a Negate here as well. Which I do quite like. I don't expect that one to be uh, available later down the line. But uh, we could try just be proactive rather than reactive. Chainer's Edict isn't too bad. Um, exclusion Mage I'm not against either. We've done pretty well with an Exclusion Mage. Uh, but an early game removal spell like an Edict seems okay to me. Um, exclusion Mage has that downside of not being particularly good if your opponent's big creature has an ETB effect. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the Chainer's Edict. It's not like the best removal spell, but I've had some decent results with it from time to time, so I'm going to give it a shot. And yeah, just wait until our next one. So, so far we've, uh, we've got a pretty, pretty decent build that I'm very happy with. Uh, let's see, Quench, Temple of Deceit for the fixing. I think we take the fixing. 
We've got some double blues and some double blacks. The temple's pretty good as well. I do like the quench. I think I'm going to go for more removal-based uh, answers, though, rather than counter-based, although, obviously, if a counter pops up um, and I don't need the fixing, then absolutely going to pick that anyway. Opponent probably, by default, will play around my double blue being open anyway, so we can kind of bluff counter spells. Alright, pack six, so... Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. Get to see who's in here. I don't think there's anyone, uh, anyone of note, is there? No, 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 no. Is that? That's a pro, right? I don't know. Some people pretend to be pros. Doesn't really matter. We're not actually going to play against this pod anyway, but it's curious. Yeah, I think our blue-black deck actually looks pretty decent. It seems as though nobody's really playing around with it. And this is the last pack, I think, that we have not seen anything from. So we should start seeing the cards that we sent off. So the first pack had lots of blue and black in it, so I expect that we've got a tough choice coming up. If my memory helps me in any way whatsoever, which is questionable at best, uh, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm just really liking uh, Spark Double as a solid pick as well. Just even get extra extra stuff. Ooh, Thought Erasure or Silent Departure. It's probably got to be Thought Erasure. I need some early game plays anyway. So we're going to take that card. Surveil, pretty good at making sure we find the pieces we need. Hmm. Never really had a chance to play with this card too much. So we got Secret Keeper, Essence Scatter, Charter Course. I think it's Essence Scatter. I believe we've got already enough cards that mill for Merfolk Secret Keeper to be just kind of mediocre, to be honest. So I think interaction is really what we're looking for at this point in time. We've got our bombs. We need our removal. Uh, we've got the Oz of Enforcer, I think is going to be the pick. Just a death toucher. Can really deter a lot of big creatures on the ground. So I'm not too upset with that hit. It's obviously a bit of our uh, excess that might end up being cut. I mean, we could already put it in the sideboard. I don't know. Uh, Labyrinth. It's going to be a land that we take. We don't really have any use for any of the other stuff. I think that was the pack with all the lands in it as well. So the Triome and the Castle Lockthwain have gone. Which is interesting. That says to me that we're fighting over at least black cards. Uh, Tranquil Thicket. There's nothing really in here for us. I'll probably just take the Thicket in case we splash green. Yeah, I'm not going to be playing white, I don't think. And I'm certainly not going to be playing any of those cards. I mean, Sunwing, maybe, but doubtful. Rotting Regisaur. Probably not going to run it, but it's on colour. In theory, I could play it. But doubtful on that one. Probably want cards in hand rather than discarding. And dead card. Take the green again in case we splash green. And yeah, blink's okay if we splash white, but I doubt it. All right, let's have a look. See what have we got in here that works for me? C dasher octopus. You're a human, right? You are. So that doesn't really sparkle with me. Embodiment of agonies sticks out at the moment. Of one mind might be okay. So we've got the human. We might find an, another non-human. Drawing cards isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, yeah, this pack's not very good for us at all. I think on the off chance that I I need a blocker, essentially. In Bolus's clutch is search for his counter. I think it's search. Get that card filter in. The Immortal Sun. The lands, the lands, they're not for us. Would love a watery grave. I think shock lands are in this format, right? Got the taps, the scries, and the checks, and the cyclers. Uh, I think it's dread presence. 
Could see an argument for Knight of the Ebon Legion as well. Uh, but we'll go with Dread Presence. I think it's just removal. It's card draw. We like those things. Psychic Corrosion is very, very on, on theme with us here. So let's get that in the deck. Hmm. I think we've got a well-formed list at the moment. I think what we need to focus on is protecting ourselves, most of all. Protecting ourselves and finding our pieces and potentially ramping if we can as well. Uh, Spark Harvest is fine-ish as far as protection is concerned. I honestly feel like Opt might be the better pick though. Could even see Murmuring Mystic though, making birds that we can block with whenever we cast instants and sorceries. Hmm. It's a tough one. I'm not sure we have the creatures for Spark Harvest, and I don't know if anyone's going to pick it either. I see Opt actually going more realistically than Spark Harvest does. So we'll we'll take our chance. Sorry, that's me, guys. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Cryptic Caves, Curious Obsession, Cat Oven's in here, and someone didn't take it. Hang on a second. Let me just... There we go. Phone's on silent. Nobody took Cat Oven. Do we take Cat Oven? We could take the cat. If we take the cat, the oven's more likely to come back, I think, because Mono Black Devotion's kind of a thing. Uh, I do like Cryptic Caves, but we're very demanding on our colors. Fiend Artisan is fine. I think I'm going to take the cat, and if the oven comes back, I'll put it in the deck. Dungeon Geist is solid. I have no artifacts, so Emery is just completely dead. Yeah, it's Dungeon Geist here. Fay of Wishes, Treasure Map. This is a nice pack. Is Treasure Map the pick, or is it too slow? I feel like it's too slow. We're going to be really reactive on the, the early game. Let's take Trickster. So we can be more reactive. Pick eight. Here we go. Someone's got a tough choice ahead of them. Give me those packs. Alright, so we got the Of One Mind. Sea Dasher Octopus. Probably not going to take the Sea Dasher, to be honest. I'll take the Of One Mind. Don't know if I'm going to play it. It's probably going to be a really easy cut, to be honest, but we'll see. Uh, Tasha. Nothing on colour. Nothing likely to be splashed here, to be honest. I'll just take the Tishar. We're going blue-black. I don't think there's much question about that. Uh, take the harbor. In case we splash that green. We've got loads of <laughs> potential for green to get splashed here. Let's take the wilt. If we do splash, we can cycle it away if we don't have the green. If we want to have the uh, removal. Of that type. I feel like our pods are very slow on the picks today. I'll put it out there. It seems to be getting stuck on people. It is a. Uh, I wouldn't say this is the easiest draft that I've ever had to do. It feels um. Very much like. I don't know. We are competing slightly with someone. Take the overseer because it's castable. We're playing best of one at the end of the day. I think this was the oven deck. So I'll just take the pelt collector. Alright, final pack. We got the watery grave. Uh, Bond of insight is also very good. I'm looking for removal mostly, and I don't know if epic downfall is really what I'm looking for. Do I need the fixing as well? I've only got a Temple of Deceit. Fixing's always pretty good. Ugh. Fixing goes pretty quickly as well. Which player sacrifices three creatures? For six mana, probably not. I'm torn between Watery Grave and Bond of Insight or Epic Downfall. I think I'm taking the Fixing. I'm just seeing if one comes back. We got the Jace. As a disfigure, though, probably have to take disfigure. 
Nobody's going to take Jace. Not unless they're also competing with me for a mill deck, and we've got most of the good mill cards, so I highly doubt anyone's trying the same archetype as us. We're definitely not the only person playing blue or black as, like, a primary colour, so... That's a given. Hmm... Yeah, drafting a deck can be so much easier when you pick the colours that nobody else really wants. I think that's one of the things that happened in our first draft, really. Eat to Extinction, solid. Uh, Elspeth's Nightmare, also pretty solid as well. I think it's Eat to Extinction, though. There's even Disdainful Stroke here. All of these are really good cards. Falsho. Uh, Timurek Calls the Dead... Could be Dream Eater. I feel like a curve's a little bit too high for that, though. Do I really want to be exiling my graveyard off, though? Probably not. I'm probably going to have to top the curve a little bit. Dust Legion Zealot can draw us cards. There is a body double there, for sure. Uh, but I want more early game plays. And again, I don't think anyone's playing like a... Demir deck like we are, so that's not too bad. Steal a mana dock, reanimate a creature later down the line. If we want to use it that way. It's better than anything else in here, so. Uh didn't say please. Counter spells probably the pick. More interaction. Hand it over. I wonder why it says Theros Beyond Death. I wonder if there's a reason for that. Ooh, Folio Fancies Neutralize. Oh my god, this pack. This is a really good card. This is actually in my uh, one of my previous cube drafts. is a card that we passed up and I kind of regretted it because it would have been really nice. I think we've got to take the Neutralize. Uh, Bond of Insight came back. There's also a Lonely Sandbar, but I doubt that's going to be wheeling again. I'm going to take the Bond. Bond just ends up being uh, a card that can get us back our counter spells, our card draw effects, our removal spells. Anything that we're kind of lacking on, we can kind of reuse. Jace came back. A manipulation of the mind. Exactly, Jace. Exactly. Going to manipulate their minds. I think we're actually due some cuts here, but that's fine. That is fine. We should be putting things in our sideboard a little bit more often if we don't want to use it. Like, I'm not sure if Cloud can see is really a card we're going to be using. On turn three, we're going to be holding up Encounter Magic, in theory. Encounter Magic and Potential Removal. So, I think I'm just going to auto sideboard that one. How many creatures have we got? Eight. It's not the greatest amount, but... Whenever you discard a card, exile a card from your graveyard... Draw a card, discard, return all cards, exile to their owner's hands. Not sure about that one. It's going to go in the sideboard for now. And this is sideboard tech. This is sideboard tech. And then finally, sideboard tech. Alright, this actually might be one of the easiest decks to make cuts from, by the looks of things. Let's have a look. Yeah, we only have to make three cuts. Uh, usually I would cut a land, but I don't think this deck really wants me to do that. So I will not be doing that. Uh, we're going to get our Temple and our Water Grave in, which was some nice pickups. Would have liked that Zagoth Trium and those Cycling Baramors and things, but I think the cards that we were picking instead were just a little bit better. All right, so the cards I'm wondering about cutting are Dream Eater, Connive Concoct, uh, Of One Mind... What else is in here that we might not want? Hmm. <laughs> I have specifically picked out three cards, and I need three cuts. So the reason why Of One Mind doesn't look particularly good to me is because it needs a human and a non-human in the deck. And if we look at our uh, creature count, they have one human. So nine times out of ten, this is going to be a divination. Not a big fan of divination to be honest so I think that one's an easy cut. Connive Concoct 
gets rid of creatures with power two or less. That's likely to be mana dorks. And the problem is, in a cube draft, a mana dork getting stolen on turn four is not that good. So you end up having to rely a little bit more on the concoct side of things with a surveil three to return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. We're already considering getting rid of Dream Eater. So that doesn't really leave us with much, to be honest. We've got Dungeon Geist, which is okay, but nothing too fantastic, to be honest. So I think it's going to get cut. Dream Eater is just purely expensive, and that's the reason why I'm not a massive fan of it. It does surveil for, which is really good card advantage or card filtering, card selection, whatever you want to call it. I like to just call anything that relates to getting better cards card advantage. <laughs> but uh, that's just me. Uh, some people are sticklers about the words that they use, so I guess I should slightly have to care. Uh, but yeah, we get to bounce any permanent as well. I have a 4-3 flash, which is very nice. We're doing a lot of flashing, it seems. Uh, but we are stuck on kind of our turn 3 and turn 4 plays, where we're kind of going to be reactive a lot of the time. Wouldn't have minded a board wipe in this deck, for sure. Uh, but if we can get up to, like, Ashiok and Patient Rebuilding and things like that, we should be able to hopefully find what we need to keep this game going. So yeah, the reason why I'm not so sure about Dream Eater is because I don't think we quite picked up the removal that I would be happy with. Um, there's a lot here that's not the best in the world. I do kind of like our two drops though. We've got either a reactive or mostly proactive kind of play. And a lot of it's like card, uh, card draw or something to delay the game. So I don't think I want to touch my two drop slot. My one drop slot is obviously just fine. Three drops, I think, is obviously just fine. Um, as it comes to the four drops. What's our uh, 67 to 46? I'm wondering about the Dread Presence a little bit. If we got rid of the Dream Eater, I could skew the Swamps a little bit more in Dread Presence's favor. And that gives us card draw and removal as well, which is something we need. Um, I think it's got to be Dream Eater. I think it might have to be Dream Eater. Then again, it could be the land. Alright, let me get my, my sleeves. Got me old Ashiok sleeve right there. It's just going to be called Draft Deck because I really don't care. Um... I wonder if you could even get away with adding a land, to be honest, but I don't know. I'm not sure, actually, the more I think about it, that I can actually take the island put it into a swamp, because Merfolk tricks are early on, excuse me, and the requirement of double blue by turn three and triple blue by turn four. I think it's unrealistic to assume that the cutting of an island there is a good idea, so yeah, I think this is the deck we're going to go with. I'm not so blown away by its power level. I think it's maybe a little less interactive than I would have liked. I don't believe there's anything I can really change about that. I could add in a Cloud Conseer. Um, yeah, that's really about it. This Bag of Holding was kind of making me curious because of the uh, combo with Psychic Corrosion. But yeah, it's just... There's just no room for it, to be honest. I think if I start adding cards like that, I'm going to struggle to figure out where I want to go. So, yeah, these are the cards that we are not including. They're, in general, I wouldn't say particularly synergistic cards. We actually want to put Labyrinth in here as well, actually, don't we? Which, again, doesn't really go well with the Merfolk Trickster, but being able to remove creatures from combat when we have not quite an exciting amount of removal... Seems pretty good. If we can ever get to the Nightmare Muse, though, and start making those two threes, that's going to be pretty good. Because the whole idea of this card is about those Nightmare Tokens. For If we are blocked with them, our opponent exiles two cards, and we only really need to get our opponent down to uh, a very low card total so that everything else can finish the job. Anyway, that's enough rambling. I think that's what we're going to go with. I'm not blown away by it, but I think this hand... Now oh, this deck is sufficient, and I guess only time will tell on the gameplay. So if you do enjoy these cube drafts, let me know down below. It really helps out the channel a great deal, because admittedly, from my analytics, cubes not doing particularly well on my channel. 
but uh, I only play it because I really have fun with it. And I know a fair few of you guys just enjoy watching Cube as well, so I like to bring content for everyone on my channel, but yeah, this one's... Uh, this one's going to need a little bit of help on the analytics side, so making sure you hit that like button, leaving a comment, subscribing if you haven't yet done so, all that will really help help the channel a great deal, and I much appreciate it. Alright, let's get to it. This video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks, bonus videos, polls on future content, or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month, then hit the join button down below, or check out the Patreon link in the description. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. Okay, we're in, and I do like this hand. It's got an early game removal spell for any mana docks if we're up against a ramp list. And we've eventually got our didn't say please with the mana to cast it. I think we're going to keep this one. There are certainly better hands, but I think any kind of big interaction hand like this one should probably be kept. But we'll find out, shan't we? Alright, what is our opponent doing? They are mulling, so we're going to go swamp and pass. Mono red potentially. All right, so we're going to lead off with the island. Preferably, I'd keep hold of the swamp so that dread presence can do a thing. Um, it would be nice if I could just play a non-swamp next turn and then drop down dread presence. I'll just drop down dread presence. Here's a three-three. Demands an answer. So let's just do it. I think it's already dead, but yeah, fire prophecy. I don't think we're waiting until turn 7 to uh, keep it alive anyway, so let's just get that out of the way. And Rekindling Phoenix. You're a 3-3, three, three, eh? Um, I believe just dropping down Dungeon Geist here to tap down the Phoenix for now is fine. Might find ourselves in a situation where we prefer to contempt something else. And we've got a disfigure for a little creature, if that ends up coming up. So, from what I've heard, Mono Red is extremely powerful and annoying. So, you know, here we are. Let's test that theory, shall we? Dungeon Geists is dead. Yeah, I think we want to contempt the Phoenix at this rate. One mana short of Edict plus Contempt. Womp womp. Alright, well, pass the turn. Send it over to our opponent. We may end up having to counter something. Opponent's smart enough to go to combat first, so we'll exile the Phoenix. Ember Cleave. Okay. So we're going to take eight, or we could take four with a disfigure. Red cap melee. Four damage to a creature or planeswalker. Are you kidding me? You've got literally everything. Oh my god. Alright, fine. Disfigure the token. That's absurd. Alright, down to 12. We've got an Edict to get rid of the Rampaging Ferocidon. We've got Counter Magic and we've got a little bit of Tempo as well with the Merfolk Trickster. So we might still be in this game. Absolutely not. <laughs> no way, Jose. You are not having that. Essence Scatter. Okay, pass the turn. We really need a finisher now. While our opponent is struggling. Do we play the Merfolk Trickster? I think we do. I think we want to have some pressure going on. Our opponent might have some burn, which is something that they... Yeah, sure. Might as well be using. Embodiment. That's a good hit. So that's a 6-6. Six, six. We've got the Essence Scatter, so the Ember Cleave isn't an issue. And we've even got Jace when we find our third blue source. I actually think we're in a decent shape. Neutralize. Yep, we're, uh, we're winning this game. Two turn clock. This game's over. Don't know what our opponent has, and I don't care. 
<laughs> Just gonna keep slamming into their face until they die. Four cards, and get out of here, Mono Red. Okay. Alright, so far so good. We actually managed to find our finisher just in time. We didn't really find much mill in the end, but... You know, well, castable mill, should I say. But I think holding up counter magic there was just the better plan. Have no idea what these four cards were. Uh, I guess they were just loads of lands, and they didn't feel like casting them. I really don't know. Could be loads of pump spells as well. Saw a fair bit of that. Maybe even burn spells that only hit creatures and won't actually interact with the embodiment all that well. Yeah, embodiment actually impressed me. Three mana, six, six, flying death touch. I'll, I We take those on this channel. All right, let's go for the next game. Okay, we're in, and I think this hand's fine. It's not very reactive, but we get to drop down our game plan quite early on and see what we can do with that. We, on turn four, can do maybe some interaction if we find our double blue. Yeah, we just really want to find removal with this hand, but can't really turn down a pretty good mill hand. I'm not leading with a Temple of Silence. If they have a Mortify, I will cry. All right, Opt's not too bad. Allows us to find whatever we need to stay into this game. Uh, which is probably an island. Yeah, triple black's not going to do much for me. So I'm going to put that to the bottom. And there's a temple. Okay, so we'll play the temple. So we've got our double blue for next turn. And neutralize. Okay, let's think about this. Because it does look like a good castable card. But I don't know when I'm going to find the time to cast it. So next turn, I'm going to want to drop down Psychic Corrosion. After that, it's probably Ashiok. Uh, if I bottom and find an island, then it might even be Jace. I just don't know when I'm going to find the time to counter, so I think I'd rather just take a third land, or an extra land anyway, than that, and just try find Disfigures, Eat to Extinctions, Raskers Contempts, things of that nature. Maybe even a big Ashiok as well would be quite nice. So we're going to try and pass the turn, and our opponent is going to basically refuse, playing a true control deck, using the timer to their advantage. All right, three mana. Passes. We've got Bond of Insight, which is a good card. I'm going to go Psychic Corrosion and hope they don't have Mortify. I'm pretty sure it's in this format. So let's see. Start milling them. So every time we draw a card, we mill two cards off the top of their deck. So there's one. One draw. Realm Clot Giant, eh? Alright, I think we're going to go with Ashiok. We're going to start exiling their graveyard. We want to get them loyalty counters going as soon as possible. While our opponent doesn't have a creature to attack it. Just seems better. Prankle's gone. That was a nice hasty creature that could have dealt with Ashiok a fair bit. And yeah, they need uh, they need some removal for Ashiok now. I've got Dungeon Geist to stop them. I have absolutely no idea what's in their, in their hands that's stopping them from casting. Is it all creature removal? Liliana, Shatter the Sky. Not seen anything that color screws them. I should have also gone Jace first, by the way. For the record. Okay. Easiest game of my entire life. I have absolutely no idea what happened there, but... I just see a big long list of cards they could have cast. And, uh, yeah. You have to assume that their hand looks pretty similar. It's got to be, like, all removal then, I guess. I really just don't know. I just have absolutely no idea what happened in this game, but it, it happened. It happened. Let's go for the next game. Alright, this hand just looks like a mono-black mid-range deck. Can't really complain with that, to be honest. I don't know if we're going to lead off with this figure. Uh, that does need killing, for sure. I guess we might as well hold this figure open. It needs killing eventually, I should say. I don't know if it needs killing now. I'm going to take the one on hopes that they play something after that. They didn't. 
All right, so I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with the Enforcer. I'm going to save the Legion Zealot until after Psychic Corrosion comes down. Plus, we don't have to trade with the Outcast this way, so they just straight up won't attack. I don't think they would have attacked into the Zealot, but you just never know, I suppose. Legion War Boss. All right, so that makes me feel happy for keeping the disfigure around. So this creature has to attack. So I'll oblige with a block. Uh, I think we're going to go straight for the Psychic Corrosion and get that done early. I'm not too afraid of the Legion War Boss attacking since we have Death Touch on our Enforcer. So if they don't have removal for the Enforcer, I just pretty much expect them to just attack him with a Goblin Token again. But I am happy to trade off with a war boss if they decide it's worth the effort, which they do not. Alright, so start the mill train. Land and enter the V2 Ghazi, is that what it's called? Awakening the V2 Ghazi. Alright, Rekindling Phoenix is annoying. Uh, it's not something I can technically deal with just yet. I can Dungeon Guy sit, but it's probably getting killed, right? I mean, the Enforcer hasn't, so there's that going for us. I could disfigure the Legion War Boss, which definitely feels like a thing I should do. Hmm. So if I went with the disfigure plan, I'd probably want to go with the Dust Legion Zealot. I think I'm going to kill the War Boss. Neutralize. There's a Sarkhan. Okay. Yeah, I should do this now before I forget about uh, the combat trigger and just lose to that. So I'm sure I'm perfectly capable of doing that. Chandra, Acolyte of Flame. Bit of free damage for them. So I've got them down to 25 cards. Okay, so we'll block... One. We'll let the other through. Go to 11. It's not a great place to be, but it's where we're at. Milieu. Land, land. Okay. So I think this is where we go. Dungeon Geists. Tap down the Phoenix. And we'll start pinging the Acolyte of Flame. I don't think they'll block with the outcast, and Chandra really doesn't really doesn't have a tick up, so this is just slow and steady wins the race kind of pinging. If they kill the dungeon guy, so we have a death toucher here, but he does leave behind a zero one, which we'll have to deal with again. So rekindling Phoenix almost opens us up to a two for one, which is not great. Looks like they might have a dungeon guy's answer. Heartfire. Okay. So no damage getting in this turn, unless they want to get in one point and lose their outcast. I doubt it. Guess you might as well pretend you've got something that I have to care about by attacking, because it's going to die anyway. Alright, mill you. Land, land. We're at 20 cards. So I get to drop down my embodiment and agonies and hold open... Double counter spell. Not sure what that's worth to me. Well, it's worth a fair bit there. Let's do a little bit of milling. Let's get in with the Dust Legion Zealot. And let's hold our Death Toucher for the Phoenix just to stop four points of damage. It's going to come down to a really close matchup here. Mmm, yeah, can't even stop the Phoenix. Oof. I'd probably start pushing with the Outcast because it needs, what, six or more lands and then an upkeep to actually do something. So they really should just probably throw it at me. I am very close to dying, though. 
Need a good card, and I need it fast. Essence Scatter is not a good card. Alright. Cycle Neutralize. Ah, patient Rebuilding is almost good, and we've just given them a Risk Factor. Yeah, I've just got to hold back for damage now. I think we might have lost on the basis of not really doing anything. 11 cards. Virtual 9 if we obviously survive this turn, but there's no real good chance of that happening. I guess it's entirely possible that they don't want to use Risk Factor because I'll just make them draw cards. They can cast Skewer the Critics. No, they can't actually with Chandra. Chandra needs... Oh, she needs a minus two. Oh, no. Alright, so they can kill Chandra in order to cast a Heartfire. He skewer the Critics. Looks like they're going to go for the Skewer. Yeah, and then I'm dead. And that's all she wrote. One plump. Too slow. Alright, uh, we're two and one now, I think. It's no, that wasn't a great game. Not gonna lie, but... Eh, I don't know. That's If I was to predict how we'd whiff, it looks a whole lot like what happened there. So, you know. Let's see if we can keep going. We need five wins in order to get all of our money back. I really would like to get five wins. We've definitely got the possibility of doing it. I think this deck is capable. So we'll just have to see. All right. Next game. Okay, we're in. And no double, no blue in general. We do have the Disfigure. It's been doing us a lot of good, to be honest. Very much like Disfigure in this format. After today's games. I don't think I can keep this hand, though. It, it does just require lands, which is weird, but... Until turn four, we're just not doing anything, so I'm not going to take that chance. All right, so we have removal and, oh, sorry, removal and hand disruption. So I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to get rid of the patient rebuilding. This is the most expensive card that I can't see myself using. And yeah, we'll just lead off with the rightmost land. For reasons. All right, so Boros into Dawn of Hope, which opens me up for a really nice, convenient thought erasure. See what you got. Absolutely nothing. So if I take Golden Egg, they have nothing except for top decks. Um, this game could go on for quite some time, though, so I'm tempted to go for the Visitation instead. I think I'm going to go with Divine Visitation. I think I just do not want to deal with that card. And we'll take the Didn't Say Please. Since uh, anything past this card and the next top decks probably... Gonna want to be countered. So let's get Ashiok going. Start ticking them down. There's a Mothra in there, I noticed. That would have been a decent hit for them. And a Guild Globe. It's a weird deck. I'll give them that. Alright, so the crack, Fable Passage. They can start making soldier tokens now, except for Fable Passage, uh. <laughs> Gets countered by Ashiok. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Oof. Uh, I'm so sorry. Thanks. I, I won't do it, but I could. Alright, we're going to go with Bond of Insight. I don't think I care about countering their stuff. I want to go for the four cards first and then mill over. Uh, we'll take Neutralize and Thought Erasure. This game's over. It's well and truly over, and then mill four cards. I guess there's a chance they could get into this, but I don't know. They're going to need something real good right now, and it's likely that it could die to a Chainer's Edict or a Disfigure here and still allow me to hold up and counter magic for the next thing. The deck is just... It's getting pretty hard countered by both the Shuffler and myself. Imperious Perfect. Yep, yeah, that is a card that is getting killed with a Chainer's Edict into a didn't say please to counter the next thing. They're playing one card a turn. The game is over. That's all we wanted from our opponents. Best matchup is the matchup where our opponent plays one thing per turn. 
So we pass the turn. We've still got eight cards left to mill. They've got 16 cards. We do need another mill source for sure. They're just going to make a 1-1. One, one. And I think we're just going to disfigure it so they can't interact with our Ashiok. There's a swamp. Hmm. Uh, we will Thought Erasure them here. Make sure they can't get anything good. Yep, the very last card. We'll hold up Encounter Magic. Play a land for the turn. Probably going to cycle this Neutralize, I'm not entirely sure. We've got a, a Mill 3 here. Yeah, that 1-1 one, one doesn't really do anything, so we don't want to kill that one. There's a Dust Legion Zealot. Let's go Dust Legion first. I don't know what would make me want to keep my Ashiok, but it's definitely something we should think about. Alright. Goodbye, Ashiok. You've done a real good job. I just noticed an Elspeth went into the bin there. So they've got seven cards of which to beat us. We know we're countering two of them, and we're also going to be milling three at the same time. Idyllic Tutor, help yourself. This card is pure disadvantage. It has no targets in their deck, so they make a 1-1. One, one. Uh, I'm going to trade off my 1-1 one, one for your 1-1, one, one, while you can't use it to draw cards. I don't think you would, because honestly it just decreases your clock, but it's there. It's there as a thing you could do. Alright, neutralize. Yeah, this game's over. Alright, pass to... Five cards left. If they play anything, they lose three cards from their deck. This is just textbook massacre. Oh yeah. Psychic Corrosion. If we draw a card, we mill two of theirs. So, five cards left. They got three peeps. I'm sorry, opponent. I realize you've played actually no part of a game here. I'm not going to say that my deck isn't partly responsible for it. Because it certainly is. No. It's heroic intervention? Is that what it's called? Yeah, heroic reinforcements. Yeah, one card, we draw, we mill, we pass the turn. And that is it. Opponent played a three-colored deck that was way too slow, and we just had all the answers. It happens. It happens. Sometimes you just perfectly set up to beat someone. Sweet little list, though. It's got some good cards in it. Sigil. It's not much of an enchantment theme, though, for Sigil of the Empty Throne. And they got Dawn of Hope. They got the Dryad. And Divine Visitation, some really expensive enchantments. Yeah. I feel like you would be able to find a, a better card than Sigil, but I guess it goes off twice and you're really happy. So I don't know. Maybe uh maybe I'm wrong about that, but yeah, pretty good game. Let's uh let's carry on. I think we're now three and one. Three and one? Three and one. Let's find out. Three and one. Alright. Two more wins, and we've gone even any further. We've made profit. We do need to make profit based off of uh, our win-loss ratio in general. Um, so, yeah, if I could get that seven, that'd be nice. But five, I'd be happy with. Five is free. All right. On the play with an Essence Scatter... Uh, we do need lands with this hand, but it's very reactive, and I'm very okay with that. Yeah, we just need uh, one black source would make me happy. If our opponent does nothing next turn, thought erasuring them would be nice. No land or elves or gilded goose, please. Fantastic. That is not a fantastic draw, though. That might require us to go neutralize, depending on what our opponent does here. Untamed Carvu, a 2-2. Two -two. Uh... I, so many better cards to counter, but I guess if we got neutralized next turn, we'll be doing that anyway. Let's just stop that damage. I don't know when I'm going to find the time to do it, and I certainly don't want to trade a two mana for a four mana card. I do want land drops, so we're going to go Thought Erasure and make sure that Surveil helps us there. Alright, so they've got three mana. 
and a number of different things they could do here. Ram through. Finale of Devastation. It's probably Imperius Perfect. Stone Cold Serpent doesn't really demand that I answer it immediately. Though, that being said, Ashiok's tokens are multicolored, so this is hard to deal with in that fashion. So I think I actually do take Stone Cold Serpent, and we definitely take the land. So we can kill Imperius Perfect. Is that what we do right here? I think we do, because it allows us to effectively surveil again. And if we find that land, we've got Ashiok, so... Ashiok is just going to close this game out very quickly, and our opponent currently has not really a way of dealing with it. Yeah, Black Blade that can't equip. And a ram through with no target. So, here comes Ashiok. I'm going to start making two threes that when they attack, or when they block, they exile two cards from our opponent's library. And now, oh my god. Well, now I think we just hold up and neutralize. I don't think we're really in a situation where pushing this current board state is a good idea. So you can block. It's not when it becomes block, it's on becomes blocked, it's only when it blocks. And there's a slight difference. We got Raw of the Worm. And Imperius Perfect. Ashiok's ult does allow us to cast up to three spells from their graveyard without paying their mana costs. This is not a card I care about. It's one that we can keep blocking. Opt. Alright, so we're going to keep ticking up. We're going to keep exiling cards until we find something really tasty from our opponent. There we go. Ooh, I saw something in there. And it was Mantle of the Wolf. Okay. So we can keep blocking. We'll opt. I don't think there's much reason not to. Chain is Edict. Uh, probably not very good with our Boreal Grazer. And we do have Jace here, but I'd rather keep up and neutralize. The board state is currently in my favor, so I'd like to keep it that way. And they've been making one player turn so far, so I can't see them changing that. So if I was to cast three cards from here, it would be Roar of the Wolf, Imperious, Perfect, and still probably not good enough. I can keep going with my tokens. You sure you want to do that? It blocks. I exile two more cards. Ram through. Target creature you control deals damage to its power to target creature you don't control. If the creature has trample, excess damage is dealt. So that is fine. They're trading a 2-1 and a card for a 2-3. So it's really a very, very bad trade. Um, I don't have the blue to hold up and neutralize. Do I care? I mean, it would be the first time I've ever casted the ult on Ashiok. Let's go for four more cards. Wolf Willowhaven, I think, and Gawclaw was in there. Let's do it. Never done it before. Alright, I would like Raw of the Worm. Uh, I would like... Hmm. Gawclaw? No... Cruel Spellbreaker. And I would like... Mantle of the Wolf. We'll put Mantle there. I do give my opponent the raw... Um, into their graveyard. But I have neutralized, so I don't care. Um, and yeah, we're just going to play the Embodiment. <laughs> they can take their entire turn to try and uh, make a 6-6 six, six there, and it won't do anything, and then... Yeah, we've uh, we got a pretty tasty board. That is my first time using Ashiok's ult there. It wasn't the most powerful thing in the world, but, I mean, you know. I think, really, if we're talking about the most powerful thing in the world when it comes to Ashiok, it's all those attacks that I was getting in there and the board state that we currently left with, which any, any board state that looks like this is the best in the world as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, let's go for another game. I think we're now 4-1. and one. Let's double check that. Four and one. Six minutes since I last checked. 
Yep, four and one. All right, so one win away from going even. I could see myself doing that. I'm not going to get ahead of myself. But, you know, one win, two losses. Seems reasonable. Let's do this. All right, two lands and a search for his canter. Uh, ooh, this is a tough one. We don't have early game interaction, so we could get run over if it's a aggro deck. However, search for his canter is very useful at making us get our land drops when we want them. I don't know if we can keep this hand, though. It would be going turn two and we wouldn't be doing anything on turn three. And then E to Extinction, don't know if it's going to be good enough. And that's all assuming that Search for his Counter hits as lands in the first place. I think we just take them all, it's not worth the risk. Uh, three mana with a Disfigure, Dread Presence. Yeah, let's take this. And the card to put to the bottom is probably Spark Double. We're going to assume that Dread Presence dies. And Bond of Insight's just useful, so. Disfigure for turn one. Kills mana docks, kills early game aggression. And we're going to go with an island in case we need to trickster next turn off of another island. And see what our opponent wants to do. They've got a playable. What's the playable? Honestly, don't know. Alright, so we got our island. Pretty good. We get to drop down Dread Presence a turn after as well. Hopefully we find some swamps so it's actually useful. And they forgot their upkeep stop with Treasure Map. Or maybe they just don't want to do it. Usually means they've got a 3-drop here that's more important than a Scry to improve their hand. In general, that... Hmm. Reveals their hand, choose a non-land, and they exile it. Okay. Do I let them take my Trickster? I think you can have your way with this hand. They want to take Trickster, so be it. I think if I play Trickster, then they get rid of a better card. Yep, so they just take the Dread Presence anyway, and I'll just go for the Trickster. So the reason why I bottomed that um, Spark Double was because of exactly reasons like that. I didn't really expect the the card to last too long. All right, pass the turn. Still no upkeep stop. Don't know if our opponent knows how to do an upkeep stop, because that's definitely how treasure map works, is that you improve your draws. Typically, that's that's how I see people using it, is to uh, make their draws look better. All right, what have we got? Anything four mana or higher? I think I'm going to graveyard that. Because I think I'm just going to bond of insight. Could go for the trick with the trickster. Could see that. I think Bond's just better though, because it actually mills for search for his canter, which is going to be very useful. And we'll get some really good cards, hopefully, anyway. Uh, we got one neutralize, which is fine. So now our graveyard has four cards in it. We've got cards that we want to be casting here. We milled over an Elspeth Conquers Death, a Liliana's Contract. Seraph and a Take Vengeance. It's not bad as far as cards go. Alright, they're going to end step Scry. Will they upkeep Scry? They will not. Alright, it's official. Our opponent does not know how to do the stops. We'll keep that in mind when we're making strategic decisions. So they've got to play something big here, otherwise they know that they're going to get neutralized. Prankle. Yeah, he's pretty big. Uh, we will say no blocks. I would like to incentivize them to actually make me sack a creature. Don't know if they want to make me discard and draw, though. That's exactly what they want me to do. Okay, uh, we'll get rid of the opt. They get rid of a plains, and we draw a temple of deceit. Need an answer to Prankle. 
Shayna's Edict, not quite it. Um, it's a weird one. I think we put it in the trash. It's also something I can flash back as well. Let's thought erasure their hand. I think we're losing this one, to be honest. I think we're just way too clunky. Our opponent's got off to a great start on burial rights. It's got for a Seraph of the Scales. Yeah, we're losing this one hard. There's no chance we're winning. Uh, I'll get rid of... I mean, it just really doesn't matter. If I get rid of them, burial rights, there's a chance to draw a land and they get then they get to do one of these two drops plus rights, so I'm not going to take that. They've only got one good target in there anyway, so double flashback doesn't matter. Uh, just take the cast down. No. And then scry. We've got a flip test canter, but it's just not a good thing. Yes, pass. We've got the Disfigure to block the Splendor Mare. Now that I've got rid of the cast down. One to the top. Yeah, we're dead. We're not winning. The moment they wanted that card, this game was over. <laughs> Getting in. Just with Prankle. Sure. Go to ten. Sacks a creature. Why didn't you get in with the Splendor Mare? I don't get it. I will get rid of the Disfigure that I was going to use on the Splendor Mare. Patient rebuilding is probably too slow. Hmm. So they've got the card advantage on us. We haven't established any of a anything that looks like a board state. They've got Chainer's Edict protection. Vraska's contempt. Okay. It's a start. That is for sure the beginning of a good card. I just kind of have to pass though. It's still not good enough. Now they can write if they want to. Uh... Yeah, just gotta, just gotta keep murdering. It's all just so bad. I'll cycle this neutralize on end step. Or just get rid of it here. Either one works for me. Discard a card, sure. I will get rid of this neutralize. I honestly don't know if even that's a good idea. It might just be the patient rebuilding, but I feel like that's just a losing play. Swamp. Lyra. Yeah, this game is over. And we draw a swamp. Alright, we're moving on to the next one. I'm just torturing myself from playing anymore. I guess we'll, uh, for the sake of science, we'll look at what we could have drawn. Uh, good cards. Okay, right. Well, next game. Alright, we're in on the draw, and this hand looks pretty sweet, to be honest. We've got turn 1, Opt, turn 2, Thought Erasure, turn 3, Ashok, and a turn 4, Jace. It does need a little bit of removal being on the draw, and our opponent's scaring us with them lightning bolt sleeves, but hopefully we can find something like that. We do have the Dust Legion Zealot, and we do want to find lands, so I think I'm going to go with the Island for the Opt, so I don't have to pay the 2 life unnecessarily. And it's Boros, so oh boy. All right, so take the two. Opponent has a Dark Dweller Oracle. Shot. Sure. Not seen that card in a long time. And yeah, just, I think we'll just take any lands, to be honest. 
Today's play of the day is gonna be Dust Legion Zealot to block the Dauntless Bodyguard. And hope for the best. Eat to extinction. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Sky Marcher Aspirant. I'm just getting for two, which is good. That's what we wanted. All right. So now the tough call comes along where we do kind of want to see what cards our opponent's got in hand. Because uh, we want to keep them off of both the City's Blessing for the Aspirant. We want to keep them from killing our Dust Legion Zealot. And we want to keep this board state from killing Ashiok, so we don't want to play Ashiok. I want to set up Dread Presence, which is something we can do by playing Island and Labyrinth. And then we've got a trigger on it. I think Thought Erasure is the play. We certainly don't want another land with this hand. We want more removal. So if we can find that, that'd be grand. This is where they fire off any burn spell they may have. They didn't use Shiv and Fire. They do have Unbreakable Formation, though, so that kind of has to go. And, yeah, we don't want no land, so let's put that in the trash. This is a very sketchy situation. We're going to pass. They're going to Shiv and Fire my Zealot. And we're going to have to hope that Dread Presence gets us there. It has to survive a turn, which, to be honest, means that they have to bane fire us. I think this is an, an over game. I guess we could actually pass the turn here with an eat to extinction. And then we've got at least a dread presence trigger. So let's get rid of... Oh, this guy has a sack in response. That's annoying. Well, we'll get rid of the 2-2 anyway. Make sure the sack trigger isn't there so Dread Presence actually gets an activation. So they exile it and they get to play... Wow, <laughs> weaponize the monsters, are you kidding me? What is wrong with you, Magic the Gathering? Stop it. That's not very nice. Oh my god. Fine. Fine, kill my Dread Presence for zero value. I don't care anymore. Whatever. Two damage here. Sack here response and ping me to death. I'm dead. That was absurd. Yeah, opponents just got the nuts against us and then they bane fire for the win. Alright, well, let's move on to the closing thing before I get a little bit tilted. Oh, they also had slaying fire. <laughs> uh, verdict of this deck. It was pretty good. However, it sorely lacked removal, which I think we could have picked at a certain few situations and chose not to. So there was definitely certain picks during the draft that could have been better for me. Um, but overall, to be honest, we went four and three. So I paid a thousand gold for this event. That's fine by me. That works for me. Yeah, I'm just a little bit tilted how that last game went. It just did not under any circumstances help us at all. Then again, some of our wins is a little bit of a karma situation where some of our wins, we won by forcing our opponent to just not play the game as well. So I kind of deserve it a little bit. But yeah, we passed some cast downs. Um, I'm sure there was other uh, spells we passed as well, like Exclusion Mage might have been good as well. Uh, I kind of obviously off the top of my head remember what cards we picked instead of them, so... It's questionable. I don't know. I thought we had a really good a card, a really good deck there, and it just didn't. It didn't come together the way I hoped it would. Sometimes that happens, which is another reason why if you haven't drafted in the cube draft, just do it. Because even if you think you've got a bad deck, it could be really good. My worst deck so far, in my opinion, was the first deck. So let's let's put it that way. Um, and this one and the previous one felt better, and they weren't. So you know. Just goes to show, even if you're of the impression your deck is bad, it can still do pretty good. Even if your deck appears to be good, you can still do pretty bad. There's variance involved, and, you know, this, there's only a slight amount of uh, decisions you can make that change that. And, yeah. Yeah. Four and three, though. 
four and three it is what it is hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video again as i mentioned this will be the last cube video for a while because uh, i've played too much of it already and yeah uh historic brawl tomorrow so hopefully you guys enjoy that content if you do make sure to hit that like button subscribe hit the bell icon so you get notifications when that content comes out on the channel and yeah i'll see you all next time bye bye